touched by your Holy Spirit and renewed in body, mind, and spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I'm used to saying that on Sunday when people are in action in the pews. So I say it again if you're at home, please be seated. Today I want to start with a little illustration. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, my wife came to me and said, the garbage disposal just made this huge, loud noise when I turned it on. I said, oh. So I went over there and I stuck my hand down in it, you know, just to see, it would, see if it grind up my hand if it was still working. And in it I found one of the two pieces that spins around and grinds it up initially into smaller pieces before the other wheels grind it up even smaller. And it was broken off. <clears throat> and I knew when I saw it, there was no fixing it. It wasn't held on with a screw that I could just screw it back on. The, the, it was actually welded in there and it had broken. So we had to get a new one. And I installed it and it's working great. It's actually a lot quieter than the old one. I love it. But you know, just like that garbage disposal, <clears throat> you and I were broken and we can't fix ourselves. What do I mean when I say that? Let me begin by reading from Genesis chapter 8. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of man, even though every inclination of his heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As you can see right at the beginning of the Bible, God has told us and informed us that every aspect of our heart, every inclination of our heart from when we're a baby is evil. The church teaches that there's seven cardinal sins. Pride, greed, gluttony, lust, laziness, envy, and malice. <clears throat> what that tells me is it's not just the Ten Commandments and, and those big things that we do, you know, murdering people and stealing and lying. And, but it's actually the motivation of our heart. Jesus said that. It's, it's out of the heart that comes all those things that causes us to be evil. Romans chapter 1 put it like this. The wrath of God is be, being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. All, although, I'm sorry, they have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Although they know God's righteous decree, that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do those very things, but also approve of those who practice them. See, Paul was writing this letter to the church in Rome, warning them about this kind of behavior in our lives, the kind of sin that comes up out of our hearts and makes us evil in the sight of God. It makes us broken. And you and I cannot fix it. We can try and be good as much as possible, striving with all of our might. But there's nothing we can do to wipe out the sin that 
we've committed, the sins that we've, uh, by not doing something that we should have done. You see, we need to be made new. And something needs to be done to clean us up. I want to tell you a story that I found that was uh, kind of gets the point across in a, in a very powerful way. I'm going to read it to you because it's so good. Bible scholar and pastor N.T. Wright <coughs> retells the following story about an archbishop who is hearing the confessions of sin from three hardened teenagers in the church. All three boys were trying to make a joke out of it, so they met with the archbishop and confessed to a long list of ridiculous and grievous sins that they had not committed. It was all a big joke. The archbishop, seeing through their practical joke, played along with the first two who ran out of the church laughing. But then he listened carefully to the third prankster, and before he got away, told the young man, Okay, you've confessed these sins. Now I want you to do something to show your repentance. I want you to walk up to the far end of the church, and I want you to look at the picture of Jesus hanging on the cross. And I want you to look at his face and say, You did all that for me, and I don't care that much. And I want you to say that three times. And so the boy went up to the front and looked at the picture of Jesus and said, You did all that for me, and I don't care that much. And then he said it again. But then he couldn't say it the third time because he broke down in tears. And the archbishop telling the story said, The reason I know that story is that I was that young man. There is something about the cross, something about Jesus dying there for us, which leaps over all the theoretical discussions, all the possibilities of how we explain it this way or that, and it grabs us. And when we are grabbed by it, somehow we have a sense that what is grabbing us is the love of God. You see, the cross of Jesus reveals the love of God for the world, for you and for me. It was God's way of redeeming the world, for cleaning up the mess, by having Jesus take all the sin of the world upon himself on the cross. And then we have this wonderful verse written by the Apostle John. 1 John 1. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Are you willing to accept the fact that you are broken? Are you willing to accept the fact that that Jesus died on the cross for you and for me. Would you confess your sins now to him and receive his forgiveness and accept him as your Savior? Let us pray together. O oh Lord our God, we know that we cannot, that I cannot fix myself. And I confess my sins to you now. <clears throat> and Lord, I ask that you forgive me. And I receive and accept your forgiveness. And Lord, I ask that you come and live in my heart and I will follow you all of my days as my Lord and Savior. In your name we